Can you tell us how old you are? Four. Is that what's that four? That's what it sounds like. Six employees over seven years, only two of which knew each other because they worked. Otherwise, they were seasonal, so we had lots of shift changes. They would say that they would come out here, and as they're about to head down, they'd look and they'd see two shadows, human shadows on that wall, moving like they're going down steps and literally just disappear in front of them. The first time I heard it, I was like, okay, they're seeing their own shadow. Then I heard it over and over from six different people. And if you look here, this is how this is lights off, breakers are off, this is how it is. You cannot see a shadow reflection on that wall until you really get right up about here. And they all swear, again, these are people that didn't know each other, that they saw a shadow on the wall. Again, I've never seen it, but I was in a tour one night, we had about six people here, and I've come to the belief that maybe it's a sensitivity thing, how sensitive you are, because when I was telling the story, and we continued along, nobody, people took pictures, nobody got anything, and about, um, when we started another project on this side here, one woman said, oh my God, look, and everybody looked over. Nobody saw anything, but she was seeing the shadows. And she said that she could see the shadows. There were two human shadows there. She said the shadow on the back, the, the left shadow actually looked like a woman because of how the hairstyle was up. You could just see a puffy here. And she swore they were there. Everybody took pictures, nobody got, we've never got photographic evidence here. So if any of you see anything, let me know. Now back to, David and Don, one of the things that they were both attracted to was this case. 
Nothing special in that case other than they're all items from Ripley himself. The robe belonged to Ripley, the two other robes on the right they were collected by Ripley. Nothing real ritualistic about it. But when David did try his spare box around there, we got a lot of voice feedback. And I'd say it's about 50-50 in this gallery about picking up voice feedback on here, but I like to try it every time. So we'll see if we can get anything to come through. Oh, one other thing. You'll see that I count on my finger like to 15 or 20 seconds. Generally, you want to give them 15 or 20 seconds to try and verbalize through if they are going to speak. And if they don't, they don't. Are there any spirits in this gallery that wish to try and communicate with us? Can you tell us your name? I like she said what a couple times. I heard something back right here. It was very yeah. Can you, if you want to speak to us, you have to be very loud and very clear. If you want to let us know that you're here, you can try and touch that antenna on that black box. If you're a spirit we've talked to before, you know how that works. It lets us know that you're here. Somebody did it before. Again, can you tell us your name? Tell us how old you are. Four. Is that what four? That's what it sounded like. I wonder if that was really. Can you tell us how old you are? Four. Is that what it four? That's what it sounded like. Lily, is that you? Can you tell us your name so we know that it's you? If it's Lily, you know how that box works. Can you get right on top of there and dance around the antenna for us? Whoever's there, can you tell us any of the names of the people in this group? the equipment, we're going to move on to the next gallery, and uh, you can follow us there if you want to chit chat with us, you know how this works. Bye, bye. If you want us to go, say go, if you want to stay, say stay. That was still kind of cool. The now, so, so, see, it sounded like you said four. It changes night by night. I've had for the past, I want to say all of last month, we got almost nothing out of the spirit box, mm -hmm. but REM pod activity was crazy. Wow. And she told me last night that she had a lot of, she had no REM pod activity at all, but they got some stuff coming through the spirit box. And I actually called up her name, one of the cashiers that happened to be on the tour, and one person that was in the tour.
now, the main focus in this gallery is going to be these masks on the wall and the items on this counter here. And all these will be left out if you guys walk through later and you want to look at it, except for the shrunken head neck, uh, the shrunken head here. This one will be put back in the case when we leave this gallery. So if anybody wants to pick it up and hold it after we finish talking, you're welcome to take pictures with it. All of which you'll be able to touch, but I have to give you guys a little history and warning first. The first of which is going to be this necklace. So are, are what you're doing, where you're standing, are you reflecting in that? Um, you see, I'm holding my hand. Can you see anything? No. But in that, where I'm standing, in there is a, I don't know if that's a stairway, but there was a shadow that went across here, and I thought it was you. No. The only other person here is my supervisor, who should be in the office by now. TJ, are you in the office? Oh. I was looking at the jewelry, and I glanced. Oh, it was just oh. Anyway, I'm there. <laughs> well, if you see anything else, let us know. I will. This necklace is a sorcerer's necklace from the Sea Dayak people of Borneo, and they were cannibalistic headhunters. But what this necklace was designed for was as a source of power. The high priest or the sorcerer would through some ritual, actually insert fish hooks into his fingers. And ritualistically, he tried to capture the souls of their enemies and store them into the necklace. Those, these are monkey skulls, and he store them into the skulls. Now, when David, when first let's say Michelle, when Mich Don Michelle came through, she just got drawn to this case over here where they're normally kept. And she said, there's something in this case, can you open it up? She didn't know what it was. Mm. She touched everything and then she got uh, a feeling on this hair. She, she picked it up. She said she instantly felt a surge of power. Then she put it on her neck. Are you feeling anything? Like, yeah, I'm feeling like a little burning sensation. I've had right people here. say they've gotten grabbed on their leg before, but. Well, it, it wasn't a grab. It, yeah, kind of kind of a little burning sensation, but. David Sloan, he uses thousand rods to try and find hot spots, and he was drawn to this. And they both came separately before. We didn't die, I mean, uh, and he asked about the necklace, he asked if he could wear it, he put it on. And when he put it on, you instantly saw him kind of do like one of these, like a little slouch. And his assistant was like, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I just feel very heavy and very blah. So he took off the necklace, we tried some spirit box, we'll talk about it in a minute. He took off the necklace, put it back, and he called me like three days later and said he felt for three days like something was attached, he still felt the weight of the necklace on it. Now, We've had some different things happen with this here. People, supervisors, we don't go into the cases on a daily basis. We go in maybe twice a month to do maintenance, clean in, things like that, show cards, wipe down, because a lot of them are fragile. Some have to be dealt with a little differently. So the only ones that go into the case are supervisors. I'd say about 60% of the supervisors since I've been here, which is about seven years, have reported that after first hand, very first time cleaning this case and touching the necklaces, they have very bad dreams that night. That's the only warning I like to tell people. Now I have had one, like I said, you can hold the necklace, take pictures of it, put them on. I have had one person during the tour actually put it on and in a matter of about five seconds just start dripping sweat, like pouring sweat. And you saw him clamping his hands and we're like, what's wrong? And we thought he was having a seizure or something. And he said he just felt like he could tackle somebody, like he just felt very powerful. Anybody want to? No, I <laughs> you can hold it, take pictures of oh, yeah. it, wear it. Sure. And if, like, after you leave the tour, you have, take pictures, you have questions about it, you can always email us and we can tell you some information. Now, um, when David Sloan tried the spirit box over there, we were getting a lot of responses, but he couldn't understand what they were saying. So he said, well, well after a few tries, he said, well, maybe they don't speak English. So we quickly used our phone and we Wikipedia'd, like, what was it? language of the Dayak people, and it turned out to be uh, Tagalog, which is basically Filipino. And so we Googled some Filipino phrases, and when we started using the phrases, you could, we still couldn't understand them, but it became much more clear and much more verbal when they were talking to us. I only have one phrase memorized, so I'll try it when we try to do the spirit box at the end. 
The other item are these, these uh, masks. These are actually on loan from David Sloan's personal collections. They're the only item in all of Berkeley's collections throughout 32 auditoriums that does not belong to us. After David came through, and Don came through and all that, we found that, okay, we're gonna do the ghost tour, so I contacted David and say, hey, we're gonna do the ghost tour, do you think uh, there's enough activity for us to do a tour, and can you give us any feedback, do you mind if we talk about you during the tour that you came through? And he said, no, no, I think there's lots of activity, it's really great, and I actually have something you may be interested in. These are the books that David wrote, and if you ever read or purchased this book, these masks were actually talked about in his book. And what it is, is somebody purchased these masks for $40 at a Salvation Army, not knowing what they were. And he took them home. And him, along with all the owners since then, have recorded very unique things. The mask on the right is male, and the mask on the left is female. People who, was, who uh, have touched the mask, the male mask, or been within the vicinity of it, report one, sometimes seen a dark shadow, uh, in their home at night, waking up at 5 a.m. from a very bad animal nightmare. I'll tell you about that in a minute. And the female mask is associated with a female presence and a little girl about five or six years old. They call the woman the protector because she just has a general feeling of being very positive. But uh, overall, the two masks, we're not sure if they're something tying them together or if they're separately bound somehow. Now, as far as the dream, when David brought them, he told me he had haunted masks. I was like, I'll take it. I don't care what it is, I'll take it. So he dropped out the mask, he dropped off one of the books, and he said, read the book, but there's a chapter in there on the mask. And they were wrapped in towels, so we brought them to the office, I opened it up, I'm like, oh, this is cool, and I said, okay, I'll read it. Never got to read it. But he did call me the next day, and he was like, so, how did you sleep? I'm like, what do you mean? How do you know? And he's like, did you have any bad dreams? And I said, yes. And I was, the odd thing is, I remember specifically waking at 5 a.m. because I always check my phone whenever I wake up. Woke up at 5 a.m. I had an animal dream that night. I consider it bad because my dream was that I was being eaten by a camel and processed all the way through. Mm -hmm. However you want to take that. Mm -hmm. So to me, that was a nightmare. But again, people report animal nightmares when it touches the mask. You guys are more than welcome to touch the mask. Um, don't try and lift them because they are on a hook. If you want to touch the mask, take pictures of them. The mask and the necklaces will be out once the tour is over. Um, this here is fairly new to our collection. It's only a few weeks here. And there's nothing tied to it um, ghost-wise that we know of. But we like to pull all the new artifacts out and give them a test run when we're here. Now with the shrunken head, it's the Javara Indians of Peru. They would actually, once they killed an enemy, they believed that every enemy had a soul that could come and wreak havoc or revenge on you. So they chop the head off and they go through a two month ritual through following the full moons to shrink the head, which was done by dipping in oil, dipping in water, hot water, sand, clean it out. They would bound the lips during the process and then this became a necklace that they would wear as like a talisman. Again, you're welcome to take pictures of this, just be very gentle with it. It's an actual human head that is it's a guy. It is his here. Um, and once we leave this gallery, this one will be going back into the case. But you're more than welcome to take as many pictures as you want. We will try and use the spirit box if we can pick up anything. Did the uh, nightmares happen with both masks or only with the male mask is associated with the nightmare, only. yeah. The, the negative effects seem to be with the male, the female mask. People have reported seeing a female and a little girl. Nothing, but usually when people associate this, they tend to associate them together because it's, they tend to touch both of them. You're welcome to, um, we've had some interesting reactions on this one. People, some people, and I, I think it's again, it's a sensitivity thing. Sometimes when we've been in here and people touch them, the same person sometimes it reacts to will get activity on the spirit box, the REM pods, and all that when that individual touches it. Some nights nothing happens, just really depends on the person. One thing that happened in here, this is a little side story. Uh, with the spirit box, you can see there's a, like an illumination on it. We're, and you can always hear, usually it gets very noisy, but 
when somebody does try and speak spirit-wise, it tends to get a little calm on there. We're in here doing it, and we had asked, at one point we said, what's your name? And we're waiting, waiting, and about 10 seconds through, I'm holding it pretty much like this, the illumination went off, it went dead, and the name Henry came through, loud and clear, that everybody did one of these. 